Welcome back, folks. Uh, take a look over here. We have now a little while ago, I had the pleasure of doing a little bit of proofreading and publishing when we were going through a transition on our back end of Steve Rhodes's Mastering Probability. And this newsletter has such a wealth of information in it. it I mean, it, it goes above and beyond for um, regarding information, what it talks about, its breadth. Steve is always responsive. I mean, this is this is really awesome. You can try it one month free, guys. Money back guarantee if you find out you don't. Uh, it doesn't vibe with what you're doing. Um, but seriously, folks, I would really recommend trying this out if you haven't yet. Steve Rhodes, are you there? I am. Jacob, is this, is this the inaugural show? Thank I don't know. I don't. I, I'm just uh, filling in for Tom where I can. So <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. Oh, great. Well, you're you're doing great. Uh, glad to uh, glad to join you. Thanks for the nice comments about the uh, the newsletter. In fact, we'll talk just a little bit about that. Uh, but but first, what I thought we could cover um, is what, what I see just taking place in some of the general markets out there. You know, just to provide some folks with some areas to watch, some different levels and so forth. So this first chart that we have up on our screen has got the four daily equity future contracts and most of my signals. Um, not not for individual stocks, but with regard to the general market are coming from the futures contracts. And the reason is because uh, they're trading, um, you know, nearly 24 hours a day, say 23 hours a day. And so it's providing. And so I'm a pattern recognition uh, trader out here. And so I need more information, not less information. And most of the time, the same signal that we would see taking place, let's say, on the S&P 500 or the SPY is not the same signal that is forming inside the ES Mini. So there's a big difference here. Now, I'm not suggesting that people have to trade the futures contracts, but a lot of uh, a lot of our listeners are, are trading, whether they're trading options or they're trading the leveraged ETFs out there. It's really important to understand what's going on inside those equity future contracts. So as an example, here are the four. We'll go through each one of them. On the daily time frame, what the daily ES Mini form was an A to B equals CD pattern. So, Jacob, we were all turned down to that uh well but really by tom and, and larry but i think larry is the one that really uh pushed that pattern out there because okay. of following you know hm gartley's work but but certainly tom uh, had the a to b equals cd uh in fact you know that's where i first learned it was from tom and then and then uh, got involved with uh, larry so a great pattern it works for all time frames it works for all instruments out there it's one of the workshops that i have for people that try to subscribe that do subscribe to mastering probability so it'll teach them all the nuances of that pattern but here what folks just need to be aware of they can just write a couple numbers down on a pad of paper so we have what's referred to as a sell the d point now it's not just that it's an a to b equals cd pattern jacob it's the fact that the pattern gets confirmed by bears in this case here because price is moving up and the way that that is done is by taking Take a look at Japanese candlestick charting. So I incorporate pattern recognition, and the way that those patterns complete is with the market telling us, and that's either through a bullish or a bearish reversal signal. So in this case here, what the ES Mini did was it formed a bearish shooting star candle. So to add, uh, I'm not on a live chart, on a, I'm on a uh, PowerPoint out here, so I don't have the exact day, but four days ago, whatever that trading session was. So what that means, folks, is that as long as price doesn't close above 41.77, 75, we've got a top in place. Now, that top could just lead to a sideways move, uh, consolidation with inside its profile, a number of different things out here. The first level of support is 41.35. Now, I'm not sure exactly where we're trading at this moment, but watch at today's close, the 41.35 level. If price closes above below that, that'll be a close below the top of the daily profile. Now, a profile, when I use that word, folks, that is, uh, uh, we, I use profiles to help me identify where buyers and sellers reside. In this case here, uh, the sellers did reside at 41.35, but once price got above that, oftentimes old resistance can become new support. So a price closed above 41.35 at today's close, we really have a, a neutral type signal versus, and even though we have a top in place, we would have a neutral signal. And the reason, uh, uh, Jacob, that we would have a neutral signal is because price would be above two levels of key support out there. One, uh. the top of the profile, and in two, uh, a, line, uh, a line that's on my chart, it's red and green, it's called the oscillator and change line. When that line is green, which it is now for the ES Mini, it tells us that we have a price oscillator that is trading above zero. And a price oscillator is nothing, or an oscillator is nothing more than a, a measure, measuring the difference between two items. In our case, I'm measuring the difference between a 19 and a 39 day, in this case here, because it's a daily time frame chart, the, the, the 19, to 35, 19 to 39 exponential moving average. 
of, of for price. And when the line is green, what it's telling me is we have a rising price asset above zero. Those are bullish conditions, unless there's some resistance that we're really aware of that's right up in front of us, which is this 4177. So here's the here's the ultimate uh, numbers to write down on your pad of paper, folks. If there's a close below 4135, you should expect price to get down. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we, if price, so I, I, my, my, I, I can say I, I screwed something up here, but I, I'm, I'm anticipating that price will go target the 4135 level. And if price closes below that, then we're going to take a look at 41, 14, and 4076. Not until price breaks below or closes below 4076 do we have any kind of a change in trend. So that's the ES mini. We'll be much quicker here on the NQ. The NQ uh, would form or appears that it will form a Rhodes Mintum indicator top today. And if it does that, the first level of support is 13.062, which I believe we're trading above right now. If price were to close below 13.062, then that's going to bring the 12.705 to 12.770 area into play. For the Dow equity future contract, the area to watch. So the, the Dow does not have a topping pattern. So what we don't have here is synergy with regard to tops. Yes, we started off with the ES Mini showing the top. The NQ may form that top today, but the Dow does not have a topping signal. And so therefore, it remains bullish. That doesn't mean that it can't pull back. And if we do get a bearish reversal candle, that would then generate a sell the D point pattern. Should that happen, then we'd likely see price pull back to 33,738. And if price got below that, we'd be looking at 33,460 and then 33,300. 321. The Russell 2000 is just simply consolidating with inside its profile. And that's the bottom right hand panel chart out here, Jacob, and, and everybody listening in. 1722.70 is support. Bottom of a profile is where buyers are at. Top of a profile is where sellers are at. That's at 1825. And the center of that profile, that third line, should one exist where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that price. So that's the bigger picture and key support uh, and or resistance levels to be watching. Now, a number of folks that are inside the den are simply intraday type traders. So what's the levels to be watching there? Jason, probably about uh, 13, 14 years ago, I took what was called, you know, Larry does a lot of work on uh, celestial type aspects and things yes. of that sort. So I took the entire, I got in touch with the author of The New American Ephemeris and paid him to give me a digital download of all that data. I then took all that data and was able to incorporate it into a different program that I had. And what I was looking for was some consistency, some event, some celestial event, some event out there, some planetary alignment, where every time that that occurred, it gave us an advantage. I wasn't able to locate that. <laughs> However, during that process, I was able to locate a lunar pivot point that works for reasons I don't understand. I just know that it works. And it's called Apogee and Perigee. Perigee uh -huh. came in this weekend on Sunday evening. Perigee is when the uh, Earth is uh, closest uh, to the um, moon during the lunar cycle. And so the key levels to be watching overnight for the ES Mini is going to be 4174. For the NQ is 13212. For the YM, the Dow is 34. Is, uh, 34125. Jacob and everybody listening, the price closes above that. It tells you not to be short those indices. The Russell 2000 is already trading above Perigee, so it's got a mind of its own. So it's a great level to be watching for yeah. support and resistance, and those would be the levels to be watching. Endlessly so. fascinating. Endlessly fascinating, Steve. I'm telling you, folks, you just, just try out the newsletter. I mean, if that wasn't enough for you, I don't know what is. That was Thanks. awesome, Steve. Thanks, Jacob. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so Best much. Best of luck on the rest of the show. <laughs> See you now. Bye. You bet. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.